well, here we are, part one of what I'm planning on being a three-part video series of essentially doing a really epic shootout of how a lot of the API hardware sounds compared to the digital versions that Universal Audio has designed. And what's unique about all the UAD plugin channel strips is that it's unison technology, so when you're tracking through it, it actually loads the impedance um, very similar to how the hardware actually loads impedance when it's interacting with the microphone. So you get kind of a, a really unique thing that not a lot of companies do where you can actually track through their plugins in real time and you know actually get an interaction between hardware and software to get those emulations and copy the actual hardware. So this is part one of three parts. This first video is basically going to be me walking through my methodology and how we're going to do things moving forward because there are going to be some slight differences between the hardware and the software, and I'm about to run through all those. The second video is going to be the one that's the most fun. That's where we actually start tracking a whole song and pull in a bunch of musicians and do all the tracking. Part three, the third video, I'm actually gonna do the mix and I'm gonna run all the hardware tracks into the box console and mix through the API console with the 527 compressors on the bus. And then we're gonna take all the UAD plugin um, tracks, run that through the Luna summing and some of the other API plugins that Universal Audio has designed. So. It's my hope that we're going to have a very thorough and really cool comparison between what hardware and what software sounds like. So in order to do that, I bought two channels of API 550B EQs and put them into the first two channels of my console. And then again, we've got two channels of the 527 compressors that are built into the console already. You can route those to any of the first two channels to track through those. So in the real analog API world, I'm going to have two full channels with API preamps, API EQs, and API compression. And so that should be a pretty solid foundation to compare against the um, API unison preamps. So I, um, I wanted to be able to use the exact same tracks, so I need to split out the mic signals. And again, go big or go home. So I've gotten a few of these radial... Pro MS2 splitter boxes to split the signal out. Um, spare no expense. Um, if we're going to split the signals out, I wanted to do it right. And these radio boxes are fantastic. So what I want to do now, um, again, let's just kind of go through methodology and how this is going to work and kind of look at some of the subtle things and the differences between my hardware chain and the uh, Unison plugins, and we'll go from there. Whenever I do shootouts or try out a new mic or new gear, I usually reach for an acoustic guitar. It's a pretty full range sounding instrument and it's one of the only things I can like somewhat competently play. So hopefully by running through the signal chain and going through things one by one, it'll help make a few things in the second video make a little more sense. So I'm not having to talk through as much. We can just roll through when we're doing the fun part in the second video. So. Signal chain moving forward, uh, I'm almost always going to be going preamp, EQ, then compressor. I find, especially with um, an API signal chain, that's just how I like to roll. I usually think sound better to me that way and work better. So let's start out just hearing the preamp.
in my experience with API preamps, um, you can't be afraid of going into the red. Um, that's kind of where the fun begins. API preamps have a hell of a lot of headroom, so don't be afraid to drive the preamps a bit. It's really easy to do that on the Box 2 console because you can throw the fader into, into the signal path so you can drive the preamp, lower stuff on the fader so you're not hitting your, you're not peaking going into your computer. I'm doing the same thing on the API plugin, driving the preamp a bit and turning down the output to compensate. First thing to point out is that things will not align exactly in terms of settings on the analog preamp and settings on the UAD preamp. They're close. The analog preamp is the gain knob sitting at about 3 o'clock and the UAD one sitting around 2 o'clock. Um, that was pretty close. The, I got them to match pretty close. But again, I'm driving them, so I'm having to compensate on the output as well. But just recognize that I'm going to have to use my ears when to get the settings as close as possible when starting out with the preamp because I can't set them visually and have the outputs exactly the same. So when I drive the preamps, I'm going to have to use my ears a little bit to match stuff. Let's go ahead and throw the EQ into the circuit. And I'm turning it on on the plug-in. Take a look at what I'm doing on the EQ. I'm boosting a little bit on the top. We, we're boosting 4 dB at 10K. I'm taking out 2 dB at 240, just taking out just a little bit of mud. Now I'm boosting 4 dB at 40 hertz just to give a little bit of low end and some of that might might sound a little extreme um, but again I just kind of wanted you guys to hear what it sounded like as far as matching settings on the EQ on the analog gear and the UAD plugin it's really simple it's almost exactly the same EQ it's just API's four band the way API EQs work, and uh, some of you probably know this, some of you might not, but the way API EQs work is called proportional Q. So whenever you boost or take out a frequency, you when you start out just boosting or taking out 2K or 2 dB, the Q is very wide. So it's centered on a frequency and it has a very wide Q. Now, as you go up or down with more extremes, when you go up to four, the Q narrows a little bit, and when you go up, it keeps on narrowing. So that if you're doing extreme things, it's a very, you know, narrow Q. When you're doing slight boosts or cuts, it's a wide Q. So it has the ability to sound very musical and just add a little bit or take a little bit out or helps you get a little bit more surgical if you need to take out or add a lot in a certain frequency. So that's kind of what gives API EQs their sound. Now again, because there's a lot of presets in terms of frequency points and adding and in increments, there's not a whole lot I can do to mismatch. So moving forward, we're just gonna match the EQs exactly. Let's add some compression in. Compression in on the analog.
I know I got a little rep repetitive there, but now that we've got EQ and compression into the circuit, I just wanted to do something a little repetitive so you could listen back and forth between analog and digital. Um, so compression is where things are going to get the most complicated. The first thing we need to recognize is that the 527 um, hardware compressor is capable of doing a lot more things than the what is it the 225 compressor in the vision channel strip the uad vision channel strip compressor is a much more simplified version of something like the 527 but fortunately sonically they're they sound very, very, very similar, and they're doing the same thing in terms of all the cool mojo they add and the actual compression um, meat and potatoes. So what you'll notice me doing when we get to the second video and I'm tracking people, when I start setting compression, I'm probably going to start out setting the compressor on the UAD plug-in. That way I know that any setting I put on the UAD plug-in I can mimic with the 527. The 527 is capable of doing any of the compression combinations that the UAD plugin can do. The UAD plugin cannot do everything that the 527 can do. So just recognize that. The other thing to point out about the both the 527 and the UAD compressor is that they both have auto makeup gain. That's how a lot of the um, API compressors work. So I believe in theory we should be getting a very, very similar output. If not, I will compensate for that later just with the DAW faders before I bounce files out for you guys. Um, but do keep that in mind. I don't really have control over you know the output that the compressor ultimately spits out. Now... I think it's worth mentioning that the limitation with the 225 compressor is with the attack settings. It's got three predetermined attack settings. You've got fast, medium, and slow. Fast is at 2 milliseconds. Medium is at, let's see, 18 milliseconds. Slow is at 25 milliseconds, I think. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to pick one of those attack presets on the UID plugin first because I know I can match it with the 527. Um, let's see. Release, you've got a lot more release settings, but again, you are a little bit more limited with the plugin one, so again, I can match it. But good news is that the gain reduction metering on the plugin and the 527 is the same LED strip, so in theory, I can match kind of how much gain's happening between the plug-in and the hardware pretty accurately. Now it's like the it's like the preamp. I'm not going to be able to match things in a visual manner, but I'll just use my ears and my eyes so that if the UID compressor is hitting two to three dB of compression, I'm going to match that with the hardware as well. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer real quick because there's just one more thing I need to point out. Whenever you're feeding a straight analog signal chain into the UAD, Universal Audio Apollo, and a hybrid feed where you're going through the unison preamps, there's going to be a slight delay between those two tracks. And I actually went through and figured it out. If you put time adjuster on the analog feed after the fact and you offset it 59 samples things line up as best they can that's going to give you a time aligned feed between what the unison feed is and the straight analog feed um i've seen i know phase tests are a little controversial but i think they can be helpful so for any of you when you get the session files I'm actually going to bounce the analog files out with the time adjuster plugin so that everything's as closely time aligned as possible. So that if you want to do some phase tests and, you know, flip the phase between the unison feed and the analog feed, you can, and they'll be as close as possible. 
if you don't time align stuff and you start doing the phase tests, it, it's going to be worthless. So that's a really small thing that I just felt the need to point out. So again, when you guys download the session files, I've already done that for you. I'm going to level match everything uh, if there's any little discrepancies. And I'm also going to put that 59 sample offset on all the analog tracks. So everything's lining up as quickly as possible, as closely as possible. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm sorry this was a longer video, but again, I really feel the need to be thorough on this because, you know, it's it's going to be a very epic test in the end. So hopefully you enjoyed this and I will see you guys on the second video when we actually do all the fun stuff like tracking.